Hello and welcome to Kink, Kink That Train. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> A supernatural drinking game podcast is the podcast where two improvisers, comedians, and friends recap for you our favorite episodes of Supernatural while we play along with the drinking game rules that we made up. In our quest to curate the perfect Supernatural watch list and the perfect Supernatural drinking game rules, uh, I'm Chrissy Lenz, director of the Neighborhood Comedy Theater in downtown Mesa, Arizona, and with me as always is Nate McWhorter. Who is a performer and teacher and things at the Neighborhood Comedy Theater in downtown Mesa, Arizona. And Chrissy, tonight's episode, I'm so excited about. It's um a a favorite for sure. Tell us what it is. This is oh, this is your pick, so you get it to is do my the pick. I get to do all the honors. I'm so excited. This is from November fifth, two thousand nine. Which let's see, at the time I would be a freshman in college. Mm. Uh, you and I had were were several months away from meeting Chrissy at the time of this uh of the that this aired. That's how long ago we are going back. We've done a couple, uh, uh, I think, more recent seasons in our recent episodes. So we're taking it all the way back. Season five, episode eight. Yeah. It is called Changing, Changing Channels. Channels. And it is, I think, maybe outside of the pilot, which I think you showed to me before we ever started embarking on Supernatural mashups. The first episode... I ever really watched is this one right here. Boom. And and you can always get if you're ever looking to get me into a TV show, show me one of the weird one off stylized <laughs> episodes. That's what I want to see. First, show me the musical episode. Show me the back in time episode, which in this show, there's a lot several. But like, show me those one of those. And then I'll be hooked. Don't show me one of your like, you know, run of the mills. Give me the weird stuff. So yeah, changing channels. One of uh, just a brilliant, brilliant. Uh, uh, yeah. Are you going to give us some context of where we are in terms of like, so season five is the, is, was the possible last season. Right. Possible last season, which like at this point in Supernatural is like every season has been the possible last season. Right. Uh, uh, they're always like on the, the razor's edge of being canceled but season five specifically which i believe this is actually now we we did do uh no that was season what was what's a french french connection is uh season six season six and they keep making the season six jokes so yeah season five this is uh uh, sam and dean uh seem to be on the the uh path towards conflict uh with our archangels Yep. As uh, uh, wanting to use them as vessels, uh, uh, that would be Lucifer and Michael. So uh, the the kind of uh, this episode exists both on its own as the monster of the week, and exists to like serve the myth and the arc of the show. It's one of those rare like double, like if you again just uh, as someone who watched this episode without ever watching the show before you're like, you get to some of the parts where it's talking about like, Oh, play your part and, and, and do what, you know, do what these guys want and just, you know, bring on the end of the world. You're like, Oh, okay. But that's not like a huge part of it, which is awesome, which we'll yeah. get to. We'll get into. Uh, yeah. So, oh, so uh, um, before we start the recap, what were our drinking game rules? Oh yes. Our drinking game rules. I don't remember what I drink. The night I watched this episode and came up with them, I forgot to write it down. I think, yeah, I forgot to write it down. Uh, but tonight I'm drinking a Modelo, so oh, that counts. Hello, Modelo. Um, Modelo is wonderful. I'm having a Topo Chico exotic pineapple. Oh, nice. Um, so uh, our rules for changing channels. Anytime the channel changes, take two drinks. Um, Take a sip or a drink, depending on how you want to go, for doctor. Uh, Take one uh, drink for nutcracker. Nutcracker! (laughs) Uh, 
Uh, take a drink for genital herpes. For every time they say it or just during that whole thing? I, I think maybe every time Sam says it would be maybe a good way to go with it because he has to say okay. it a couple times and that's only then a couple versus like they all say it constantly. Yeah. Uh, unless unless maybe if you're playing with a group of friends, everyone assign yourself a character, which is like a number one, two, three, and then every time that person reappears and says it, you, anyway, you could do it so many ways. Uh, and then pop culture reference. Uh, and that's obviously like not counting just being part of like the, not counting yeah, yeah. The, the the parody of the show the whole thing being a pop right. culture reference a specific pop culture reference yes yeah, specific pop culture references uh and then puns puns uh, uh and that puns goes for at the when they're in the crime scene investigators the csi yes. which i love so many different parts of uh <laughs> so uh okay the episode Oh wait, uh, I have I oh. have a, a shot for oh, every time they say the stat. Stat. And then I also had the rule son of a bitch. Oh I forgot I forgot to write that one down when we talked about it last time. Yes. Son of a, son bitch. Of a bitch. Yeah. The shot there or uh yeah, or or heavy drink and then uh, stat and those and the uh, the puns I think you just kinda waterfall or chug while they make them because yeah. they just make them all back to back. Uh, so yes, that is that is the game we we came up with for changing channels. Excellent, and it is uh, we can get right into it, which is not your typical supernatural open. No, no supernatural. This week, this week in November of two thousand nine was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Can you believe it, Chrissy? I can't. They believe got a it. live studio audience in there <laughs> to watch Supernatural. Uh, so we, we open on the like traditional three camera sitcom set. Uh, and we see, uh, we see Dean and he has got what looks like, uh, uh what we would later see in, a, in an episode that we've already talked about recently, which is a Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. style sandwich. I'm going to need uh, a bigger mouth. <laughs> need a bigger mouth. Yeah. Uh, and like. I, he, we get the cheers we get and so we're seeing the boys already in their their trap uh we're getting the i love when we start in the middle of an episode um that's always one of my yeah and flash backwards yes uh but then the best part that comes out of this whole open um we obviously i mean you get the whole like we were up all night studying odin the the woman who's like who then walks out the door in her lingerie and it's a bikini in a bikini <laughs> that makes no sense um and even i oh but i love it because that's the whole point uh and and uh, uh we then get the wonderful opening like uh full house title card like song and everything and i'm sorry I, I love the writers. Everyone who wrote this episode is is wonderful, and they gave us the show. However, I really wish that you would have had created your version of the Supernatural theme song, Chrissy, <laughs> for this, because I think it's far superior to the point where I sing over it. I sing your version Aww. over the episode. <laughs> I sing Supernatural, da 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 da. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe maybe that'll be our bonus content as we can find fish that out and oh, sing it. Oh God, no! Uh, <laughs> um, but I love it. It's so cute. They ride a tandem bike. They ride little mini motorcycles. They throw and catch a football and fall down in unison. You have like the ghost in the closet or whatever. And they like, laugh uh, and laugh. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. And then when we when we come back on the other side of the credits, on the other side of the title card, we have entered the real world, the boys' world, and there is a uh, bear on the loose, supposedly. Yeah. You know, and and then One the bear turns out to be Lufarina. Yeah, it's a murder bear. And then we talk to the woman, and it actually turns out to be the Incredible Hulk. And I love the line. This is where we get some pop culture references, which I did not um, write down tallies for those, but I definitely remember a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And that is the uh, <laughs> banner. You wouldn't <laughs> what like it when you say, Grace. 
And then he says, but the Dean like wants clarification on which Hulk. And then she's like, Ferrigna, Lou Ferrigna from the TV show. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, so the boys, they they want to check it out. Uh, but they're, so they stay in town. Wait, isn't that and- woman like from the TV show? From, in, from the, isn't she like a sort of a winking cameo that she's from the TV show? I'm not sure about that. From... Uh, the uh, from the Hulk. I might she be wrong might about be... that. Don't don't uh... don't check me on that. But they just they they make such a big deal out of out of her character that it seems like maybe she's. But never mind. Move on. Oh okay. Well, I mean, it it would make sense. That seems like something they would for sure do. Uh, but yeah, they basically then they they hang out on the police scanner. They they start realizing the boys start thinking that this is going to be. The trickster, right? Because like, uh, there's someone. Else, there's another report. I didn't write it down, but there is another report of uh, some sort of like cartoon or like TV referential character mm-hmm. uh, that they uh, seem to go after. Because <clears throat> they they're all I can remember. See, here's the problem, Chrissy, with doing this episode is I conflate. I mean, I just watched it. And I still conflate what our story was in the mashup yeah. with. I'm like, yeah, then there's Heath on the radio just just ranting the whole time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, they, yeah. It's something Acme-ish. They're like, oh, it's, it's something cartoonish. And so they decide yeah. to go to the warehouse. But it was a right. trick. Twas a trick lure. from... Yes, from the which in the uh, then and now, they give us the whole, like, the last time the, tr- the boys encountered the trickster. Uh, and uh, we still don't really know who the trickster is in the whole grand scheme of things yet. That's what we find out, sort of, in this episode. Uh, they they call him like Loki. He's like gone by like a couple of different weird names. Uh, of course, it's our the wonderful uh, Wilton Spate Junior. Correct? Is that is, Richard is our Spade. actor Richard Spate? Will. Gosh darn it. Wilton Spade is a quarterback anyway. <laughs> Richard Spade uh, uh, Jr. Yeah, so uh, he's awesome. He hosts a Supernatural podcast too that we won't talk about. But it's fine. Uh, and yeah, so uh, uh, they don't know it's him yet, though. The boys get to the warehouse and then boom, we're zapped into it. I missed a scene earlier. I missed the wonderful setup scene for what we get into, though, which is when the oh. boys are in the hotel room. Dean uh, is watching Dean, Dr. This is actually Sexy the very MD. first scene. Dean is watching Dr. Sexy MD, which, of course, is like the play on Grey's Anatomy. And uh, he, <laughs> he tries to hide that he knows anything about it. If we know anything about Dean, he has lots of guilty pleasures, this being one of them. And, uh, yeah, so when the boys get to the warehouse, they're launched into... Dr. Sexy, Sexy MD. MD. Oh my gosh. And of course and they get slapped it's... a lot. Mm-hmm. Doctor, you're you're brilliant. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, Sam is absolutely confused. Dean is confused but enthralled. We get like very similar vibes that we see later on in Scooby Doo and in basically any time they're thrown into like something like this, Dean is just absolutely jacked up and excited and can't believe it and sam is like oh my how now i got it now i gotta pull he's always like the one who's got to stay grounded yep. to like the reality if so serious <laughs> so serious sammy come on it's amazing that the time that dean had to like go back in time onto like the naval ship or whatever that he ever got back yeah with because you'd th- like you know just so many times that yeah he would get caught up and someone had like ah oh, anyway uh so yeah they they're in doctor sexy md uh we get all the slaps we get all the doctors they're trying to and figure we, out what's we get going all the references on. to like real gray's anatomy like that doctor's not actually even here he's a ghost um they're like they have ghosts in this uh it's pretty <laughs> funny but i like if you ask me that part drags a little bit like the doctor sexy md part i think even though it's our first one, it could be a little snappier. The rest on. of them are it, so snappy. Um, yeah. This one, I think, goes on. You could have split it in half and got another genre in here for sure. Yeah, get another I think, parody. I, you gave it because they give you they give us three sequences in Doctor Sexy. They give us the first sequence where they're trying to figure it out. They give us the sequence where they where you know uh, finally Doctor Sexy shows up and he's wearing the wrong shoes. 
right? It's not, he's wearing just regular sneakers, it's not his, not his cowboy, boots. cowboy boots. Doesn't Dr. Sexy always, what makes him sexy is that he always wears cowboy boots. Uh, and, and that's when we realize, oh gosh, it's the trickster. He says, if you want to get out of here, play your part. And that's when we get the guy, he shoots, shoots Dean. Dean in the back. Which is so something that would happen on ER or Grey's Anatomy. He's like, my yes. my wife really needs that face transplant. And he's like, <laughs> you're not real. This isn't real. None of it's real. And he shoots Dean right in the back and just scampers off. <laughs> I really wish they would. It would have been a little too on the nose for that time because. It, but if they had done the imaging heap, that mm, what you say, like right with them, just played that music the whole time, that would have been. Uh, uh, an awesome choice, but it's probably really expensive compared to the music they did choose. And uh, I just love then that they go to work, that Sammy has to go to work on Dean and do do the surgery. And they have all these like fancy medical tools and everything. He's like, okay, I need some dental floss, <laughs> a bottle of whiskey. And what is it? I forgot the other thing he is, but he's, he's basically MacGyver's the surgery yeah. and they all just look at him. But of course, it's just, that's where we get pick, I think. Stat and a toothpick. Yeah. Oh gosh. And uh, yeah. So he, and so, yeah, you get the, like the three or four different sequences in Dr. Sexy MD. And then I feel like Nutcracker and, and the other two and the, the CSI and the sitcom, well, the sitcom, we kind of get like the two different beats, but yeah, way too much time. They should have definitely thrown us into one show. Maybe Dr. Sexy, then thrown us into like another genre. That's where we figure out it's the trickster. Then we get into Nutcracker and go from there. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know what other genre. What other genre would you have thrown in here? Um, I don't know. Maybe something animated like a Scooby Natural, but just like for a short time. Um, yeah. You know, maybe a western or something older. You know, something black and white. Something like a Magnum PI. We get a Night Rider towards the end after our fake fake out ending. Oh, that's right, Night Rider. Yes, I knew there was another one. Yeah, and that's yeah. You only get like a couple minutes, and and that one's interesting because that is a reference to like the specific show. All the others are reference referential more to genre. I mean, there's a couple things in like the csi one that are very much like doing csi yeah not just puns or whatever and not just the shades but like um uh the like zoom in on the <laughs> on, on the, the uh, feet. on the heart yeah the that's pierced. what that was very very csi like so but the, but the night rider one they just like that's just never there's never been another show like night rider Right? Like, I mean, yes, it's like, it was its little, you know, it's drama or whatever, but there's no other show with a talking car nope. as you, <laughs> so as a character. Uh, that's so, it's interesting. I wonder why they chose to do Knight Rider. Other oh, than they baby, probably just wanted to get, have, baby get baby involved. Yeah, you had to. You had to. You had to do something with a car. Uh, so yeah, yeah, they, uh, they go from, uh, from Dr. Sexy MD from, from, Seattle, not Seattle Mercy, but where they call it Mercy. Uh, yeah, it's Seattle Mercy Hospital. Oh, Seattle Mercy. What's what is the greatest hospital called? I don't know. Oh, neither do I. Okay, I thought that's Seattle what that General. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> uh, and then we get to Nutcracker, which is where which is where things get fun because that's where we get Cass storms in, and uh, uh, no and pretty boy angels. No, Mister Trickster. No, like pretty boy angels. Uh, and the the wonderful ad for like the fish chips or whatever yeah. <laughs> the shrimp uh, chips they are oh yeah uh, and then the the boys get to do the fun acting of getting hit in the nads or not getting hit and trying not to get hit in the nads uh, and then we get the awesome like I love that the trivia question is really just like a question that is like all about the show and and you really got to be paying attention but again if you've never seen the show you're just like okay whatever yeah that's oh, weird but there's a nut punch <laughs> so you're invested enough exactly uh and yeah so they they manage to get out of that because the question they ask is uh do you would your mom still be alive if it wasn't for your brother or would your parents still be alive if it wasn't if for your Sam brother was never born if Sam was never born yeah and he says yes 
yeah and it's like right. he does, there's something where it's like it doesn't know what he's saying yes to but like it's very dean centric the nut punch game or sorry nutcracker yeah. game because it's like the question is like which uh which demon did you betray your brother with and it's like wow ruby yeah <laughs> So yeah. that, it's clearly the tricksters on Dean's side. Yes. Uh, so he, uh, the boys managed to escape the Nutcracker game. And that's when we get them into, that goes right into the sitcom then, correct? Or is yes. the Herpes commercial first? No, Herpes commercial. I love the Herpes commercial. It's so much fun. It's a lot of <laughs> and, and I think... Jerry Padalecki does it so well. If it had been Dean, like, I think it would have been a more interesting choice to make to have Dean done, been the one to have to do the commercial because he would have been much more, like, unwilling to do it immediately. But, like, I think that's why it had to be Sam because you're like, yeah, the only way we can actually make this feel like a commercial <laughs> is to make Sammy do it because... Otherwise, yeah, Dean would just be like, nope, not doing it. We'll live here forever. Look at this. We could play basketball. How cool is this? We're just going to play basketball all day long. Rest of our lives, Sammy. I'm not saying I got general de herpes, dude. I'm not saying it. Yep. It would be, that's how it would go. And it would be the longest commercial ever. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should have shot it. Maybe they did. Maybe release they that. Did. Uh, release it. Uh, so yes, genital herpes. Any other no? Any other thoughts on that other than? No, except I just, I think you probably couldn't get away with that in in 2023 you know no no you probably couldn't you'd probably do something similar there's probably a 2023 version of that probably like it just anxiety pills yeah. or something mm -hmm. uh <laughs> that's the 2023 version uh so then that's when we get back onto the set of the sitcom um and that's where we get cast tries to come back again and cast is like guys uh, this is not what I thought it was, and that's when Cass sees. And he's all bloody sees... and like banged up. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely not good. And that's when he sees actually who it is that has captured the boys, and that would be that it is uh, Gabriel. Yep. And Cass Cass finally sees who who it really is, but uh, Gabriel sends him away. And tells this is where we have the whole conversation of just play your part, just do uh, uh, the bidding of what you're being told. Um, not the whole big conversation, but he's really starting to say like, you guys gotta start falling in line. So then uh, they they play that, and then that's when they get shipped off to crime scene land. Mm -hmm. And they yes. they realize they're gonna try and find the trickster. Uh, within each of these things and kill kill the trick and try to kill him yes and so when they're in crime scene land they actually think they've got him because there's a guy the guy that they're gonna say all the puns to is sucking on the lollipop and that's been like the fake calling card for the tricks they think is like his calling. yeah tricksters love candy and so uh, they then stab this guy. We get that awesome zoom in on the stake in the heart, boom, 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 which I love boom. so much. Like, I, I, you just forget how, like, I just quintessential CSI that really is. Like, like no one did that. <laughs> they were the only people, uh, or at least anyone popular that I watched. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's not him though. And then Gabriel's like, "You dummies, what have you done?" Uh, and but the trick was a trick. It was a fake out. Uh, they actually, they actually had him, and so then they act like they think they've actually killed the trickster. Stake to the heart. Boom, done. And then uh, they go back. Everything's good. Nope, it's not. Yeah, he wakes up it's in the warehouse, good. and he's like, "Where's it?" Or no, he wakes up at the motel. At the motel, right? Because the the trickster makes him think that he's at the warehouse. Oh, we killed. They, let's go back to the hotel. And then Sammy wakes up at the hotel. He's alone. Dean's not there, and gets into the car. And that's when we realize Dean is the car. Sammy is the car. Dean, or sorry, Sammy is the car. Yeah, sorry. Dean wakes up at the hotel. I got that flip. Uh, 
man, that's crazy. In my brain right now, I'm like picturing it the other way around. But then I'm not obviously I know that Sammy's the car. So Sammy's the car. Dean realizes, everyone realizes, oh gosh, we're still in this. I don't think we killed the trickster. What are we actually gonna do? We're now Knight Rider uh and Kit. What is gonna happen? Uh, there's a moment luckily, where he's like rummaging around in the trunk to get the tools out or whatever and Sam's like could you stop that it's kind of uncomfortable <laughs> and I'm like what are you implying yes. that the trunk is his butt is, I think that is what was the implication That's gross. Uh, and and they even make the joke then about it like where'd you get the holy the holy oil and he goes at it. Sam's somewhere or something like that i don't know i think he even uh, says i pulled which, it out of sam's ass i pulled sam's ass yeah uh, uh question though so if the trickster created this illusion does that mean he also created a like fully stocked baby with like all their essentials yeah like he so he put the holy oil in the trunk and he put those like special right. branches that would kill a like, trickster in the csi world all all the tools that they would need to i think that's destroy. one of those don't pull the thread things like we just have I to know, we know, just have I to know. let it be what it is uh, but it's like when I think about it, I'm just like, how? Why? Anyway, uh, so the boys end up tra- trapping old Gabriel in in the holy circle of fire, and he releases them from the trick. They're back in the warehouse, and this is where we have the big God talk. Um, we realize who he actually is. He's saying, "Please play your parts and end the world because I'm tired of the world and all this." And they're trying to beg with him because like the underlying part of this too, the whole episode is that uh, Sam was trying to get Dean to uh, 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 court the trickster uh, to uh, try to get him to like fight against Lucifer and Michael, help them. And then this is where we learn like, oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't want any part of that fight because that'd be family squabble right there. Uh, this is all brotherhood and, and, and family stuff going on that Gabriel wants no part of whatsoever. And that's the first time they really uh, put the finger on like, oh, that's why it's the two of you because you are you always fight and it's the family thing and blah, blah, blah. You know, they really put the finger on Yeah, it. the Cain and Abel, the Cain and Abel uh, imagery and, and allegory here is really getting played up uh uh throughout the kind of i mean obviously the whole show but especially these seasons are very like biblical heavy mm-hmm. in, in a lot of that not even biblical but it's uh the the bible fanfic the that comes later yeah. all the uh all that stuff so um yeah it's it, it's real fascinating i love these seasons for that because it's like yeah you don't you, you found a way to make church things entertaining right <laughs> some of the, like the old church story you know some of the old bible stories and again the some of these aren't even really bible stories they're they're some of the like old renaissance writings and everything like that 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 people then tend to uh, uh think are part of the bible or or whatnot when they're actually they're just really old folk folklore and legends essentially mm-hmm. um so uh yeah then uh, the boys i love i do love that they don't leave him there uh, at the end right. that they they put it out they could but then i'm like could he could just probably get out well, of I that think it would just burn out eventually yeah right and like i'm sure again he's an archangel like i doubt i'm sure he could have got out of that if he really wanted <laughs> like i feel like later on those dudes have so much more power that i don't think like even that little circle could hold them right uh, uh some of those guys we're really so, early in the yeah. angel lore we are we are we're still trying to figure out how powerful angels truly truly are um and what all we can get away with making them be able yeah, to do but so, you know that's that's the um, boring part of this episode is all the gabriel play your part angels fight 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 like yeah. that's like ugh, we're so no, over the it. fun part is all the it's tv the changing channels stuff is the changing channels is the the fun moments you get where again it's just like writers paying homage to other writers and other tv shows and other genres um I, I love that it comes in the middle of this season that they're like, we're not sure if we're going to get another season. 
So let's do this. Let's leave it all on the table. <laughs> but it, but again, like maybe this is one of the episodes that may, the executives look at and go, you know, they found a way to like kind of. I mean, other I'm sure other shows before them had done a very similar concept of like multiple genres within one. Like obviously, uh, a community comes it airs right around the same time they do a lot of similar stuff in that show um uh, uh so it's not like a novel idea but you found a way to like push our arc forward in a very arc heavy show and create a fun monster of the week yeah episode that you stand alone you can watch and that's indicative of what's what's to come and why this show really deserved to to survive so yes yes how did the rules play out okay um there were a couple i forgot to actually like write them oh okay down then we don't know, won't know, watched, we won't know so. truly how far off i am right uh we will only have your number so uh changing channels i i counted five I counted times eight eight so did you not so did you, you count the like night rider I wonder if I forgot Knight Rider. I probably forgot Knight Rider. Or I didn't count the commercial as a channel change. Oh. The herpes. The genital I counted herpes. that as a channel change. And, and I counted it from when they when he wakes up and, he, and he's a Knight Rider. Okay. Oh, because maybe. Yeah. All right. Either. Well, I like eight. Eight looks sounds good to me, too. That's 16 drinks right there. Boom, people. Um, uh, Doctor. Doctor. I got I eight. got ten. Ten. Nice. Nice. Uh it's probably I probably definitely so forgot to write a couple. For down. Nutcracker, did you count every time he says nutcracker or every time they get nutcracked? I, I every time he says nutcracker. Which I only got two. I got three. Okay. Um, so I'll but admit, you should, and if you're looking to include when he gets cracked in the nuts, include when he gets cracked in the nuts. I went to get a drink during the genital herpes part, so I only counted one for the general genital. Gen, I counted one general genital. General genital. Uh, I think Sammy says it three times. Okay. Uh, and then I think overall it was like it was like eight or nine. Uh. But they say it a lot of times. I think if you're just playing, just count it with Sammy says it. Um, that's probably the best. I wish they if they had enough of the basketball scenes, it'd be really funny to like pick something out in the background. But uh, I did not count pop culture references or puns. I counted uh, six pop culture references, but I did not count the puns because I just did the waterfall because there's so many. Yeah, just the waterfall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So don't really need to count those and then uh, obviously stat and son of a bitch son of a bitch he says son of a bitch uh, four the... times four times yep. that's a good one that's that that should be i wonder if that's that couldn't be an all the time rule because you'd just be drinking every son episode all the time but son of a bitch um, uh yeah um cool yeah and that's changing, changing channels. channels yay yeah that's changing channels and again uh in the great long pantheon of of supernatural episodes is it like one that people are gonna say like that is one of my top five one of my but uh, yeah. no probably oh, not. come on oh you think you think I so i mean i i i do i love it I love it, but I think that there are a lot of episodes. There's a lot of episodes. So putting it in top five, I'd say 10. For sure, 10. I think I could maybe squeeze it in the top five. But I think there are there are a lot of episodes that bring a little bit more to the table, a little, especially a little later on in the run, that, you know, they have themselves figured out a little okay. bit more. So I, I think that, uh, but this is definitely, like we talked about, this is an episode where you really start to see the mm -hmm. promise you really start to see like okay this is something special these the the this crew i think is starting to really get their sea legs and figuring out how to push their narrative forward in their yeah. way and doing it there and doing it their way and doing it in a way that people are also going to really love and be engaged with so what do we follow this up with well i'll tell you we we've hit two of the best guest stars so far 
Richard Spate Jr. and DJ Qualls as Are you sure it's not Wilton Spate Jr. And I kid you not, the quarterback is Wilton Spate Jr. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, what's, what's gonna... <laughs> Richard Richard Spate Jr. and what was our other guest? DJ Qualls. Yes. Richard Spate Jr. It is Richard. I was. I knew you were right. I was. I was doing a bit. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, um, yes. So next up, we are going to do season eight, episode eleven, "Larp and the Real Girl," a Charlie Ooh. Bradbury episode. Do you remember this one? Um, this is the one. Yes, where this is where they first meet Felicia. No, Day. They first this meet is their Charlie, second right? go no. around with Felicia. The Day. second one. She's. Oh, that's right. Uh, because she's like ruling the LARP yep. kingdom or mm-hmm. whatever, and then needs to help them. Yes, I'm excited to rewatch it because I probably only watched it like one or two times. It's it's um, a pretty great episode. It's a really it's an easy watch. It goes down smooth. It's a, a fun episode. Uh, and here are your drinking game rules. Are you ready? Okay. Yep, Someone ready. dies. Take a drink, Sammy. Take yes. a drink. Uh, anytime they give their agent names, agent somebody, agent so and so, take a drink. This is, I have a lot of quotes that you will take a drink for. So it's t- t- take a shot if you're taking shots, take two drinks if you're not taking shots. The line is these kids today with their texting and murder. <laughs> uh, take a drink anytime someone says it's a game. Or it's just a game. Take a drink for every Charlie pop culture reference. So not any not any pop culture reference. But anytime Charlie sure. makes a pop culture reference. Here's another quote. Star or drink. When they mes- mention a, a particular name. And Dean and, and Charlie both go the porn star. <laughs> um, take a drink for a dark magic spell or no uh sorry take a take a drink anytime there's a fake spell which is someone throwing a bean bag at someone else and then take a drink anytime charlie makes goo goo eyes and those are our drinking game rules for season eight episode 11 larp and the real girl if you want to drink while you watch the episode hey did you drink along with this episode did you get a different count than we did did you play different rules than we did? Let us know. Hit us up. Tell us what's up. Sophie Sophie. Did. <laughs> Sophie got, she drank so much more than we did. She, she was sloshed watching Sophie this Sophie the kitty <laughs> wants to make herself known. <laughs> Nate, yeah. what lessons did we learn to play your part, I guess, and to con- you know yeah. what, confront your family squabbles. That's what I think. I like that. I don't like play your part. I like confront your family squabbles. Yeah. Don't let things yeah. uh, continue to fester. Set clear boundaries with your family. And for goodness sake, get your wife's face operated. <laughs> get your wife's face <laughs> transplant. <laughs> fixed get it fixed get the face yes. transplant already i know you can do it you're brilliant yeah so um <laughs> hey, hey uh find <laughs> us in the real world at the neighborhood comedy theater if you like find us on the internet at most excellent pod we want to hear from you find us at true story dot fm and if you want a little bit more want some fun facts that i'm gonna drop on you like some science uh then become a member at true story fm uh follow gank that drink and you get some fun bonus content in each episode as well as mail from me to you with some swag (laughs) so um when you're out there in the world saving people and hunting things and remembering your lessons learned uh uh, don't Oh, I already forgot what it was. Uh, uh, yeah. Set boundaries with your family. (laughs) Set boundaries with your family. Confront, confront family. Uh, yeah, that's the lesson learned. There's not many lessons to learn from this episode. Just sit and watch it. Just enjoy it. That's the lesson. Enjoy Supernatural. Um, and be excellent to each other and 
Party on, dudes. Party on, dudes.